Hey now, Sharks fans. Welcome into another special episode of The Pucknologists here on TealTownUSA.com. Today we are joined by San Jose Sharks Executive Vice President and Chief Sales and Marketing Officer Flavel Hampston to discuss the move to digital ticketing for the 2017-2018 San Jose Sharks season. Some teams like the Washington Capitals. They have the 365. They've done as I've seen several teams do that. I believe the Stockton Heat doing some sort of thing with that. They all have digital ticketing, but the Capitals are still providing the really nice printed season tickets that the holders are accustomed to. And some fans have expressed frustrations at digital ticketing because they would keep their tickets as a memento, especially like if something historic would happen, like Hurdle getting four goals and basically putting Marty Baron into retirement. Uh, and there's even a website, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, expressly for the purpose of framing ticket stuff called That's My Ticket. Mm. So are the Sharks at least considering the option of, or at least offering the option if uh, season ticket holders, because there are the ones that are going to use the ticket master app and they're going to transfer a lot of it but there are there's a small segment but there is a segment of fans that they go to as many games as possible they wear the lanyard with their you know where they display that ticket because they're proud of it and they keep them all and i know a couple people that actually got their their printed books but all, there was also the pdf option they did they kept the books just the way you know because they wanted that nice memento so as You've obviously gotten a ton of feedback on this system. Is there any ability or, or any option in the future perhaps to at least offer the printed option for a little bit of an increased cost or anything? Yeah, I mean, I would say like what, what we're, we're cognizant of the feedback. We receive feedback daily. I mean, ultimately, I think you know, that's, that is how we get better as a franchise, right? We, we do make some decisions that are based on feedback, and we retweak them or we maneuver on them um, based on feedback from that decision. So... You know, we've become an organization that will that will try things, and then based on feedback, we'll, we'll maneuver around. Uh, the, the 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 souvenir, the keepsake, memento piece has come up a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think with the lack of tickets, obviously that was the easiest memento to have year over year. I also learned the same thing with the season ticket holder pins. Um, so last year we did one that didn't have the date on it, and and you know I think our, our team internally just self admittedly didn't understand that it was that important to have the date, and we did a, what we thought was a cool pin, and we sent it out and heard feedback that, you know, we keep the pins. I have a jersey with all the pins. I have a hat with all the pins. Like this is what I keep. This is important to me. Yeah. Um, you know, on the flip side of that, I also get the emails from the guy that says, "Hey, please spend your money on something that's meaningful to me and not the pin." So so we're going right down the both line. But going back to the pin is. You know, so this year we're like, okay, we get it. Pins are important, especially those long-time season ticket holders. We're finding that's kind of the niche there. So we made a pin with the, you know, with the with the year, and then we also made a pin this year special for 25 year plus season ticket holders or members that we call. So now, now instead of having one, we have multiple pins as their memento. Um, this year we came out with a season ticket holder card, and I received some feedback there that people are keeping those for mementos and would like just a different design, like something maybe a little nicer. Um, you know, they could put in a booklet. They actually think it's easier to keep it. You don't have to keep a big booklet. You can literally keep a card and, and kind of keep those out and you pull those out just like you do tickets. So, yeah. you know, I think from the souvenir memento standpoint, we're definitely cognizant of it. We're, we're looking at it. Um, the cards, if we do them next year, will be better. Um, you know, we did them this year not thinking they would be a necessary memento, but, you know, we heard back that some people are keeping them. So, we're, so we're, we're you know, we're going to look at those. But, you know, going back to hard tickets, I, I would just say, you know, we made a decision to go digital this year. We're going to make it as easy as possible um, to get into the building and, and to manage the tickets. And we're accepting feedback, you know, to make a decision for next year. Now, what do you, how do you deal with the people that are tech phobic or the, you know, the grandparents or something who's uh, <laughs> getting a kid or right. getting, getting their kids tickets for a game? No, that's, that's, that's a fair question. So we, we looked at the usage last year from digital ticketing. And when I say digital, I'm talking like phone app, not, not the printed PDF. So, you know, last year we took a look and said, okay, how, how many people are actually coming into the building using digital, meaning using mobile? And we found that a, a, a vast majority of our season ticket holders, half season shark pack, and even our, our smaller partial plan holders are coming in using digital. So that gave us a sense of what, what we were looking at when we went to full digital this year as far as what the learning curve may be or what, or what we may be able to do. You know, from that sub-segment, you know, we looked and said, okay, there's still, you know, there's 70-something percent of season ticket holders that use digital tickets last year. So that still leaves, you know, 20-something percent to, that didn't use it. Um, we didn't want to assume that those are just your 
your tech phobic people or people that didn't want to use it, right? Because we also could take a look at those accounts and see who was using digital to come to our other events, meet the sharks, the 25 year season party, uh, mm -hmm. the 365 events that we do are all really digital only. So that, that scaled that down even more. And then we issued the season ticket cards. And what we, what we found is that those have been extremely popular to a lot of the fans who do come to a majority of games on their own, who you know maybe don't use the phone or don't want to use the phone, you know for <laughs> tickets. Um, so we're still seeing a good sub segment of those. I think ten plus percent of the cards come through, you know per night. So then he's really talking about a finite number of accounts that really aren't using the cards and, and don't want to use digital. And then we do provide option for those. We'll call as an option. You know, I had a gentleman come to me the other day, literally with a flip phone, and we're taking care of them, and we're letting them in the building. So it's not, you know, not letting them in the building without a ticket. We're getting them a ticket to get into the building. So it's not, um, you know, it's not that we want to provide a hindrance to come in. It's just a matter of, you know, how you come in, and we prefer digital, and we're working on that on that platform now to make it as easy as possible. And we do think that that's the way of the future. However, it doesn't work for one of our customers. Like, we're, we're figuring out other ways. Um, going back to that, I just stand that, though. But, but what we are finding, again, I think, if I'm doubling down on this comment, I apologize that you know the person with the flip phone coming in is just using their season ticket card now. So actually, for the most part, we've provided the solution this year that we didn't have for them last year. So last year we didn't have we had printed home PDFs and mobile ticketing. So again, if you weren't computer savvy or you didn't want to do it or know how to do it, even logging on to print out your ticket could have been difficult last year. So we had you know we had those folk last year we didn't really have a solution for other than to pre-print all their PDFs for them or have somebody do it for them. So the card really has been a, a good thing for us this year. We've gotten great feedback from it. We see it in use. And the nice thing about the card, it's also good for your, you know, your, con your concession discount, and it's yes. also good for your merchandise discount. So it really is a one-stop shop. Throw it in your wallet, come to the game with it. You, you have to bring it out a couple times during the game, and it, it's really easy instead of having a, you know, a ticket and a card and, and, and everything that's, that's multiple multiple devices or multiple forms to, to get all your benefits. So if, I, if, if I'm a season ticket holder and I want to uh, give my tickets to someone who uh, is technophobic or whatever, doesn't have a smartphone, there's a way that they can at least get them from Will Call? Yeah. Something. So again, we provide the option. So we, we have a you know, full-time staff here of customer service um, individuals that are, are just assigned to our 365 members. Um, so there is a will call option. So again, if, if it's, you know, I'm handing my ticket off to a, you know, a person who just doesn't have the capabilities or, or the phone, their phone is that they can't do it. I mean, we can figure out a way. So will call is definitely a way. Um, we've looked at the windows there. We've actually staffed the windows more than we ever have. Um, you know, we've opened up the North windows, which we've never done since I've been here. So again, like we have enough, you know, we, we feel that we have enough bandwidth to take care of any of the will call. What we found, though, so far is that will call has not grown substantially um, through this process. So while it is being used more than what it's been in years past, it hasn't been an overwhelming number uh, by, by any means. So, you know, again, for the most part, people that, that don't have the, the technology are really defaulting back to the cards or, you know, like I said, like now the majority of people are coming in and using their phones. North window. I'd, yeah, no, like, I, I always thought that it was like wasted space. I never yeah, saw that. We looked to do something else with it. Uh, <laughs> the years passed, but now you know we staffed, and we may not staff it moving forward. But you know, we staffed in the early beginning just because, again, if you come to the north side, and you know, again, there's a you know there's an app issue, or you can't figure it out, or again, instead of sending somebody all the way around the building now to have their their yeah. issue resolved, now we've opened the north windows. We're seeing how it goes. We haven't seen that many issues come through um, from a season ticket holder, base, especially from a season ticket holder base. Um, so we'll see moving forward, but as of right now, they're staffed, and we're glad we kept the space. Well, speaking of the Sharks app, uh, several fans have reported you know, an issue with the app, whether it was crashing or simply not working, and, and even I've had it uh, crash on me a couple times where uh, I ordered 16 tickets for opening night and was trying to transfer them to my friends, and if I put each name in, you know, if I sent each ticket individually where I put in their name, their email address, that would work no problem. But there was an option at the top that said, you know, use your contacts. And every time I hit that contact, yeah. just pfft. with that, how often do you plan on uh, updating the app? And some of that I'm also wondering, the Sharks app is somewhat of a gateway to Ticketmaster. And it's kind of like how much is on your end yeah. and how much is on Ticketmaster. So that's where I was going to go. So everything you just mentioned is a, is a Ticketmaster func functionality, right? They provide us an SDK. We obviously need to make it work within our app. So sometimes if, if they're... You know, their technology is crashing. It could be the plugin with the app. More times than not, though, it is it is a Ticketmaster 
kind of technology issue there, which we're aware of and we're working on, and so are they. And you know, Ticketmaster is also working on going to this this new uh, platform, um, which again is just it's a completely different experience. And I think with that transition, and I'm rewriting that code too, it might be making the the, the front end that you're using now a little you know a little bit more unstable. For, that's not a great term, but unstable for lack of a better term, because it does work. It's just at times it goes down. And then going to the the new um, the new SDK, we should see a majority of that stop. And actually, from that standpoint, when you're starting to forward your tickets around, and and the more you forward, the new SDK makes it a completely different user experience, not only from a sender, but also from a receiver standpoint. So we feel that that really should be within the next two to three weeks. And I do feel that you know a vast majority of the um, difficulties in using tickets digitally will be resolved when we release that SDK. Kind of break up the bottleneck? It should break up the bottleneck, yeah. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's it breaks up, you know, the bottleneck. It breaks up the dependency on the app just in general, um, you know, where you can use a TM app or you can log online now. So it gives the user more options as well. Um, so if they're more comfortable using a, a different, uh, you know, a different app or a different platform, like they completely have that option once the new SDK is out. Whereas if right now, unfortunately, um, you know, the only way that they can do it is if they log into the Ticketmaster app or our app. Um, which you know again is, is not the case. I think there might be some, you know, some chatter out there that you know we're forcing people to use the app and we want them in our app as much as possible. And and the answer is like yes, I do want we want people in our app as much as possible. We think it's the best place to go for you know unique sharks news, not the scores or anything like that, but you know VR and just unique stories and unique social content. Um, however, we don't want to force people to go there, so we're, we're actually working around with Ticketmaster, a solution that, again, if they want to go through the app, they can. If they don't, that's completely on, on, the, on their, 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 their choice. Yeah. So. Well, as I was say, in the vast majority of the social media stuff that you've posted, not only is it on the app, but it is made available on Twitter, on Facebook, yeah. on all no, this. I mean, again, this several ways to access. Yeah, we, want, I mean, we do want to be everywhere, right? So, I mean, our social strategy is not to gate something. You know, again, we, we will put some unique content in the app, but again, we, we also know that, hey, you know, some, some people may just want to be on Twitter and, or, you know, some folks prefer Facebook for their news and, and we, we don't, you know, again, we don't want to have them, right? Well, that's, that's another subject, right? <laughs> right? But, you know, we don't want to have those gates. So while you will see some, some stories that might be exclusive to the app, our strategy is really, yeah, I mean, wherever you want to go, we just think that it's probably the, it's the best source to go that has, the unique news all in one kind of hub rather than going to multiple apps. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and continuing with the app, uh, versus the uh, Buffalo Sabres last week, because this began getting shared on social media, I wasn't even aware of this functionality in the app, and I and I will say that, you know what, I'm going to be checking this a bit more, but uh, there was a last chance offer that had uh, tickets available for $15 for the Sabres and the upper attack zone. Yeah, sure. Yet, uh, but I did hear from a couple season ticket holders that were a little upset. Maybe it's because they didn't understand. But for them, they were upset that, wait a minute, the Sharks are selling $15, $15 seats and essentially the same row seat that I have, but I'm only allowed to sell those. Like The lowest I can sell mine for is $23. So how do you respond to those season ticket holders that feel like maybe they're being undercut even though you're just trying to promote you know. Yeah, and, and I and I got an email that that basically said as much as well. So, you know, I mean, our, our intent is not to undercut season ticket holders, right? So, our promise to season ticket holders is, hey, like on on average, you know, we will not be selling tickets cheaper or more affordable than what you were paying on average, right? So, does that mean we might have some last chance offers to a very small segment of of individuals? Like, yeah, we're gonna try and see what works, right? It's exclusive on the app again. It talks about you know again something that's exclusive there. We just talked about like. Like that's exclusive on the app, um, you know. Do we do that every game? Like, no, right? We're not. We didn't do it Saturday in those tips. We didn't. We're not doing it, you know, against Toronto. You know, and those tickets are obviously well above where the season ticket holders are um, paid, mm -hmm. and also well well above where they can quote unquote sell their tickets for. So, you know, we feel that at times, you know, last minute, last something like that. Yeah, we might put something out there, but. They're normally different channels, um, normally normally different uh, individuals you're talking to. So again, while this is via app only, it's a, it's an app notification. We don't put it on social. We're not putting it on you know on Ticketmaster. We're not putting it on anything. So if a season ticket holder does have let's say a, a twenty three dollar floor, 
you know, we're talking to completely different individuals and we don't really feel that it interferes with what they're trying to do necessarily because that same individual that's subscribed to the app may or may not be looking at tickets on Ticketmaster or StubHub or, or anything else. Yeah, and I can see, so too, if it's, a, if it's a case of you're doing it, you know, for five games out of the season. And yeah. if I remember correctly, last year season ticket holders got a, uh, based on where their seats were, got a definitive dollar credit for, for at the concession stands. Whereas this year, it's a percentage. So it's just like, here's something that we're trying. It, it could yeah. work, it could not work. I mean, and I mean listen, this, this goes back to, we're going to try, try a few things here this year. And that, that's been our strategy for the last couple of years. And, you know, we'll see where it works when we get the feedback. And if, it, if it's not working, you know, we bail on it um, for the most part. And if it's, if it's working, then we, then we like it. But we definitely are cognizant on, you know, the price that that season ticket holders or members are paying. And again, while there may be offers out there at times that might be under that, um, as a holistic standpoint, there, there's just no way, um, just based on what we sell and what we're selling, you know, other price tickets for. Even tomorrow night we have, you know, we do have the hat giveaway with the Los Tabronis hats, but the same the same seat that we're selling for, you know, $28 a season ticket holder is $50 with that hat. So while they get an item, that individual is still paying twenty two dollars more, roughly, for the same seat. Um, you know, so we're definitely cognizant of that, and, and we we don't want that to be the case where we're undercoated season ticket holders. Well, now that you you've, and I don't know if, if you're the one to ask on this, but you've just <laughs> brought up something that I've been dying to uh, to get to the bottom of. Yeah, sure. <laughs> when obviously the season goes on sale, you know, in August, August September, or whatever. Right. Uh, but season season tickets, or I, sh- I should say, single. Single tickets, games, yep. single game tickets go on sale at whatever time before the season starts, and we'll get a, a, a few games in, or uh, say I'll see, uh, there's a game, for, oh, Detroit is coming in February, I want to make sure I go to that game, so I buy a ticket for that Detroit game, and then two months pass, three months pass, and now all of a sudden there is a... Los Tiburones hat to be had, mm-hmm. or a beer stein with two bottles of chum, or there, sure. there's some sort of promotion that comes up. Has there been any discussion, or to at least, because every, everybody loves, you know, so, for lack of a better term, a tchotchke. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I call you know, it added value, right? But, yeah, added value, <laughs> giveaway. I mean, I got a whole, uh, yeah. you should see my, my uh, office, but... The option to uh, for fans to purchase, you know, th- that already have a ticket for that game, there because I remember a couple seasons ago for when it was Metallica night here, there was a uh, a shirt package, yes. and uh, it was a friend's birthday, and he took me, and they got she his sister brought us the shirt package, and we were right. like fantastic, but the table right next to it was off also offering the shirt. To fans that didn't have that, is there anything in the pipeline to do that going forward? Where certain they're, they're at least offered for people already maybe have tickets yeah, for that. I mean, what, what we did this year for the first time ever, we offered them to 365 members and actually the half season plan holders to buy all our promotional items at cost. So we sent oh. that out before the season. We sold a couple hundred packages. It wasn't a profit thing by any means from our end, right? So when we sell it to you know, the individual game buyer, again, like I just mentioned, it might be a, you know, a $28, $30 ticket that we're selling for $50, or $30 for season ticket holders that we might be selling for 50 to an IG buyer, individual game buyer. So, you know, those ones are definitely, you know, a, a profitable, you know, package for us where when we went out to 365 members and, and half season plan uh, holders, it was just at cost. And so they got the, you know, Los Tabronis hat and we're doing a Brent Burns Nutcracker later on. And we actually announced all of our bigger, um, packages. So we do make the intent to get out earlier with our bigger packages. And this year, again, we, we made it available to 365 members and half season plan holders in advance at our at cost. So there's no profit margin in there for us. Um, actually, depending on how many we order and where we go, we might lose a little bit of money on that package. But we felt we've I've heard it enough, mm-hmm. um, especially from 365 members that they buy all year. And they why is this guy feel left that, out. that came for one game getting a package, even though he, he paid more than what I did my game? So and we made those available, and it, it was popular so far. 
regarding kind of your individual game buyer, which I think is where you're going, right? The guy who's looking or the lady who's looking at a game or two, and they, they pick a game in advance and say, hey, I'm going to come to the Montreal game. Yeah, and they, I, I well, they pick this. a couple specific yeah. based on the, on the team that the Sharks yep. are facing. Yeah. So, I mean, we our intent is to get out as, as, as early as possible on our bigger items. Mo- a lot of it has to do because we have to order them in advance, right? So, again, to get those hats, there's a there's a lead, a lead time to design them, to order them, to get them here. So those are all launched pretty well in advance. Um, but we're also coming up with new packages all the time. So there, you know, we might have a, 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 you know, a partner hit us like filled, uh, is, is a partner of ours. It's the mobile app that you can, you know, you can basically get your car filled through an app that does in the parking lot where we did a filled package, you know, mm-hmm. this last, uh, might be tomorrow night actually where you get, you know, two tickets, $40 of gas credit for 99 bucks. Yeah. So some of those are launched a little bit later. Generally what we do is from an individual game buyer that bought that package, they can call in, and sometimes we can work it out where they can buy that package instead. Um, but instead, it's, it's really about getting out as early as we possibly can, and then avoiding that as much as we can. Um, what we found is that most of those games, our packages are really selling seven to ten days in advance for individual game buyers. So where you mentioned, you may identify a few games early on in the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of our season ticket holders, when I say most, a vast majority buy seven to ten days in advance of the game, and by that time, our packages are out there. So yeah. I mean, we don't feel it impacts that many people. But if it does, give us a call. I guess kind of the last thing, what what is the contingency plan if the scanning system goes down? <laughs> because I've, I've been here a couple times yeah. where I had a ticket, and I had to go through a couple scanning stations. Yeah. And it scanned red on one, and then I go to the next one, and it scans green there. <laughs> yeah. But I'm worried about now, what happens if the system goes down. Well, and, and, and so do we, right? So <laughs> we, we saw what happened. Um, you know, the Atlanta Falcons had a big issue this year where, where TM, Ticketmaster, went down. And, and the fact is, some of that happens with paper tickets or, and or digital tickets. So it's not just exclusive to digital by, by any means whatsoever because, again, sometimes it's just – the scanning system itself is down. Um, we have contingency plans in place. Um, there, there are technologies that you can put out there. Um, you know, if if the scanners are working, but let's say Ticketmaster's down, there, there's a way that we can get people in the building through like an emergency event we can build. So we have some contingency plans in place. I hope we never put those plans in to action, <laughs> but we have met extensively as a group. Um, you know, multiple times this year, multiple times last year to say, okay, if this happens. What is our course of action? So we feel that we are prepped if we need to do such. Um, many people don't know, but you know we had it actually happen during a Barracuda game last year, and actually a, a decently attended Barracuda game. Um, and I say that because obviously our weekdays on Barracuda, you know, our our, our attendance challenged at times, but some of our weekends are you know are, are, are fairly well attended. We actually had that happen and went through it and ended up being fine. Is it the double headers? Do they do better than just? No, double headers do worse uh, from a Barracuda standpoint. Really? Um, you know, late Barracuda games do better, but if we do a Barracuda game earlier, um, you know, it, it has not helped us by any means. And we're looking into why. Our, our typical thought is that you know, I'll, I'll, you know, our shark tickets. You know, you can get in whether it's on you know primary, even primary. You know, majority of our games you can get in for thirty five, forty, fifty bucks. You know, in the upper level. So you know, you're talking. You know, a difference of ten dollars for Barracuda versus maybe something for Shark. So, you know, and we looked at the playoffs last year, um, you know, which were really well attended for Barracuda. You know, ninety plus percent were Sharks buyers that came to those games. So, my assumption, and I don't really have much else to go on this, is that you know a lot of the folks that are buying Barracuda tickets, kind of on a one-off, are also Sharks fans, or may also be Shark season ticket holders, and they come to a one o'clock and then swing back for a seven thirty Sharks game provides a, a long period of of, of hockey. Um, yeah. People do it. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's a, there's a number oh, of them I, out there. I but, have. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're kind of finding that. So, you know, we're, we're working internally to, to really just identify our own kind of Barracuda database. We just hired our own Barracuda sales staff. We're looking at the analytics behind it and we're tr- trying to figure out. We, we invested a lot in the Barracuda this year um, with some giveaways, unique giveaways. So, you know, we're doing the, the PAVs and Braun, the fighter pilot, um, you know, bobblehead, which I don't know if you've seen it or not. We can show it to you oh, before you leave. That's cool. We're doing a kind of a, a playoff Dumb and Dumber with the um, Joe Thornton and Brent Burns. They're in the tux- we're doing tuxedo night, so they're in the kind of Dumb and Dumber tuxedo <laughs> bobblehead. Oh and, the, and the boys are going to wear tuxedos on the ice. We have Pucks and Paws nights this year for the first time, so you can bring your dog into the arena. We've never done that before. Whoa. That's on the, uh, I believe that's on the Saturday. 
Uh, it's a weekend following Thanksgiving. Don't uh, I should know off the top of my head, but I don't. It's a weekend following Thanksgiving where you can actually bring your dog. I mean, you have to in certain sections. There's certain ways to do it. I was going to say. We studied this. Um, we're, yeah. not, we're not the first team to do it. Um, but an but, area where you can hose it down afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have partners. We'll go outside. We'll have pee pads. So, you know, again, we're looking at the Barracuda as, as, as trying to make it a completely different experience at times than what the, what the Sharks are. Not necessarily in the game because the game is the game. We want to keep that, you know, whole and we want to keep that, you know, consistent, not only from our player standpoint, from fan standpoint. But when it comes to promotions, we're, we're, we're going on a different level this year for the Barracuda. And we're, we're hopeful that that helps uh, attract new fans. That sounded way cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, we've um, had a good time there. All right. I think we've uh, probably taken way more time than we were allotted. So thanks Great. for doing it. And you can find uh, Flavel on Twitter at Flavel. 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 Yep. Sorry. No worries. All good. We get it all the time. <laughs> but I just, I want, uh, well, at least we've we've set it in stone now. That's we what have. it is. There it is. God, I wish I would have found my t- just my name at Twitter. I <laughs> would have loved to have gotten that, AJ. That's, that's, so, a, one, that's a one benefit. Yeah. Yes. One so benefit. <laughs> thanks for taking the time. AJ, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to another podcast from TealTownUSA.com. Follow us on our social media channels for more coverage of the San Jose Sharks. On Twitter, follow at TealTownUSA and at PuckNologist. You can also find us on Instagram at TealTownUSA, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TealTownUSA, and check us out. Our post-game show goes live after every Sharks game at YouTube.com slash TealTownUSA.